at any rate, uh, we'll be talking about the art of tapering. Um, I'm sure most, if not all of you, already know what tapering is and how important uh, it is in the, in the entire equation when you're training for a marathon. But just the same, I want to take 15 to 20 minutes, take you through a few slides, just to make sure we're all on the same page, right? Uh, because if Jim were here, one of the things that Jim would tell you, uh, and I wholeheartedly agree, is that um, some people can actually make the mistake of throwing away 16 hard weeks of training in the last three weeks before the race by not tapering. And certainly we wouldn't want to do that, right? Why is tapering important? In a nutshell, tapering is important because you want to make sure that you're well rested, your body has a chance to rejuvenate so that you run your best race on March 18 and not before. Um, we call it the 3 2 one go program, and I'll explain to you what that means uh, in a bit. But uh, simply put, tapering is cutting back your training mileage starting at 21 days before the marathon. Okay? Now, as I said, I'm sure most of you, through your reading and through your studying of uh, the various marathon programs, already have a, a, a concept of what tapering is. But we call it the art of tapering because it's not an exact science. Tapering, as it relates to marathon training, is actually part science and part trial and error. Kasi, kanya kanya yan, no? I mean, we have a template, we have a format, we have a recommended schedule that we would like you guys to follow, but it still varies from person to person. And quite honestly, you don't hit, you don't hit your perfect uh, tapering formula until probably your third or fourth marathon. Because in the first two times you do it, it's still, there's still some trial and error involved in it, all right? But just the same, we'll go through um, a template of sorts just to give everyone a baseline, uh, a proven formula that Jim has used in coaching thousands of other people um, and which we've used it with the Dream Marathon uh, franchise. Can I call it a franchise? We call it the Dream Marathon. That's a third year now, right? So we've used in the Dream Marathon franchise for the past three years. We call it the 3 2, one go program. Uh, first of all, before we get to it, uh, why taper at all? Okay? Uh, four simple reasons. And if you ask any seasoned long-distance runner, they'll probably tell you the same thing. Number one, you have, to, you have to taper because with three weeks to go prior to March 18, and I think the magic date here is Feb 27, if I'm not mistaken. Feb 27, Feb 27, I think, is exactly 21 days prior to the marathon, right? By that time, and we're not there yet, but by that time, the die, the die has been cast. What do we mean by that? Uh, Hector, who's somewhere there in the back, in my dream marathon, once told me, by that time, nakakasana yung baril. In other words, you've done the work, the bullet's in the chamber, it's ready to fire, there's nothing more that you can do that can actually enhance your fitness level with 21 days out. And I think we have study after study that is now proven that to be true. With three weeks to go before your long distance event, there's actually very little that you can do to enhance your fitness level, but a lot that you can do to bring it down. Right? Hence, the second, second point, right? Because with three weeks to go, the fitness gains become minimal because what really matters in marathon training is not the last four weeks, but actually the four months leading up to it. So the fitness gains are minimal, but the risks of overtraining and injuries is actually heightened. Three, two, one, go. Let's start with the three. Three stands for three weeks out. Three weeks out, this particular week still counts. So this is crucial. Each of these stages are crucial, but this is actually quite important. 
the week starting Feb 27, right? So which is like two days after our last scheduled long run. So Feb 27 to March 4, this week still counts. You don't want to taper too drastically, but you don't want to follow up your last long run with another hard week. Hence, what's the template? The template here is the same. Stick to your normal routine, right? But scale it down a bit. And by a bit, we mean anywhere from 20 to 50% less than your peak week. For this, this last long run, like my 15K run on the weekend of March 4, I actually do a visioning sort of exercise. And a lot of people actually do this. It's like a mini race rehearsal. Since I'm still running at my planned marathon pace, but at a shorter distance, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to envision the first 90 minutes on March 18. Your mind has to, to take over and just tell yourself, now listen, we have a bigger goal, okay? And we have to keep our eye and our focus on the bigger goal. And what's the goal? To run our best race on March 18. Hence, I know that your body could probably still do more and your body's probably still looking for more, but fight that urge and really just stick to a very light and manageable running schedule. Okay? So for me, two weeks out, 10, 10, 10. That's it. Okay? In fact, I even adjust my pace to a slightly slower pace two weeks out. We call this week my body's week. Not W-E-A-K, yeah? although sometimes it could be that. Uh, and hopefully not that. But it's W-E-E-K, your body's week. This week, uh, you know, it's funny. I'm reminded of this, this, uh, this thing that Hal Higdon. You guys are familiar with Hal Higdon? Famous author, famous coach, Runner's World editor back in the day. Uh, when he was talking about what he'd tell the people he'd coach during the last week prior to the marathon, uh, and every time someone would ask him a question, uh, Mr. Higdon, I feel like I'm undertrained. Could I still do one last long run on the weekend before my marathon? He always goes to that person in a not-so-friendly voice, and he says, were you born in Kenya? Because if you were born in Kenya, then maybe you can. But you know what? I know a lot of Kenyans, and even they're not crazy enough to run long on the week before a marathon. Have to trust that even if you're not the fastest runner in the world, even if you always finish at the back of the pack, your body is ready, right? If you haven't been doing the training for one reason or another, then you worry, and I can't do anything about that anymore. And quite frankly, we can't do anything about that now. But knowing this group, and I think I've gotten to know you quite well over the past 14 weeks, knowing this group, if you get to this point, I think you'll be fine, right? So just trust it, right? This is not the first time we're doing the Dream Marathon. Many people have come before you, people who are less talented and less gifted than you, but they've finished, they're happy, they've gone on to run other marathons, and so will you. Jim almost went absolutely nuts. We almost had to hold Jim back from shutting down that tent because he was absolutely pissed. He was like, what the hell are you guys doing getting tape for the first time when you haven't even trained with tape in your legs? Right? So, no fancy stuff. Not the time to experiment. All right? Stick to your hydration plan with Gatorade. <laughs>